Good afternoon. My name is Father Tom Mulcrone, the IAFF chaplain, and the chaplain for the IAFF Fallen Firefighter Memorial. I am once again honored to serve as Master of Ceremonies for this, our 28th IAFF Memorial Service. We are gathered today in this special place to honor the memory of those IAFF members who have given their lives in the line of duty. We are joined today by IAFF General President Harold Schaeberger, General Secretary Treasurer Thomas Miller, the entire IAFF Executive Board, and numerous distinguished friends and guests. We are also jo joined by more than 300 IAFF pipers and drummers, the 757 members of the IAFF Honor Guard, and by the JKF Corral. On their behalf, I welcome the families and friends of our fallen and the thousands of fellow firefighters and medics who have made the pilgrimage to this memorial in Colorado Springs to pay their respects to their brothers and sisters. This memorial was founded in 1986 by IAFF Convention Action and was rededicated 12 years ago by adding an additional wall. This is the only monument that collectively honors professional union firefighters and emergency medical personnel from the United States and Canada who have lost their lives in the line of duty. Now, please rise as the IAFF Honor Guard presents the colors. Once the colors are posted, remain standing as the JKF Chorale sings the national anthems of Canada and the United States.
Center, pace.
Prepare to post the colors. Ready, post. Three, cover. Present. Present. Oh.
Let us pray. Lord God, from the beginning of time, you have been our refuge and our strength. And that is why we call upon you this day as we gather under a beautiful Colorado sky to, to mourn, to pray, to honor, and most of all, to remember these 168 brave ones, true heroes, each and every one of them. This is hallowed ground for our IAFF family, made sacred by the great sacrifice of our brothers and sisters. You chose them to live lives of service and to give their all for the good of the least among us. And they did just that. Now we pray, Lord, gather them safely home into your divine care. May they know the loving embrace that is yours for eternity. Comfort their families in the sure and certain hope that for all who trust in your mercy and love, love, death does not destroy the bonds that we forge in this lifetime. Indeed, these, our heroes, live on at this memorial, but more importantly, always in our hearts. Watch over and protect this day and every day those who serve on the front lines. May all first responders and those of our armed forces know your divine protection and care. Send us forth, Lord, to continue the legacy that is left to us, that service to you, our creator, and the selfless giving of ourselves to all humankind is not without its reward. May God bless this great union, and may God bless our two great nations. Amen. Attendees, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, in the tradition of our union and the fire service, IAFF General President Harold Schaitberger and General Secretary Treasurer Thomas Miller will now honor our brothers and sisters by placing a memorial wreath at our wall of honor.
Command. Wait. Turn. Command. Quick. March. Ladies and gentlemen, this memorial belongs to the entire membership of the IAFF, but it rests here in beautiful Colorado Springs. We are most grateful for the strong support we have received from Colorado Springs Local Number 5, the Colorado Springs Fire Department, the City of Colorado Springs and its citizens who make this tribute so special. I now present the Chief of the Department of the Colorado Springs Fire Department, Christopher P. Riley. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm truly honored to be with you here today. I'd like to welcome family and friends of our fallen comrades, IAFF President Schaetberger and the many locals here today as we honor today those fire service heroes who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. I would also like to thank IAFF Local 5 President Jeremy Croto and the members of Local 5 here in Colorado Springs who have worked tirelessly this past week supporting the relatives and friends of our fallen heroes. I'd also like to thank Colorado Springs Mayor Steve Bach, our Chief of Staff, Steve Cox, former fire chief here, city councilors, and many of the other officials here today in support of this memorial event. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay his life down for his friends. Those words were spoken over 2,000 years ago, and to this day still have great meaning for our chosen profession. It frames exactly why we are here today to honor all those fire service heroes who have lost their lives while protecting the lives of others. We are here for many reasons, one of which is to honor their service to humanity, fellow firefighters, and their community. We are also here to pay tribute to their memory by remembering their courage and sense of duty. Webster defines a hero as any man or woman admired for their courage, nobility, or exploits, or any person who is admired for their qualities or achievements and regarded for their ideals and being a role model. Firefighters have long been admired for these traits. Surely the people who have gone before us are heroes for placing themselves in high-risk situations for the benefit of others. There is an inherent, inbred sense of helping others that is in the makeup and personality of a firefighter. While it is right that we meet here to remember the past heroes, we must also think of the present. We are here to thank the family of those loved ones and the sacrifice 
that they, are, they have made, and our hearts go out with you. The Fallen Firefighter Memorial here in Colorado Springs is symbolic of many things we hold sacred in the fire service. Behind me is a symbol of a firefighter climbing a ladder, performing a rescue, signifying that saving lives is the most important part of any firefighter's job. There are hundreds of flags amongst us today proudly representing the many IAFF local chapters here today as they support their fallen comrades. And of course, to my left is the Fallen Firefighter Memorial Wall that has many, many names of the fallen firefighters that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. And today, with heavy hearts, we add many more names to that wall. I mentioned the word symbolic, referring to the many fire service symbols we see here today. In closing, what I would like to add is that a symbol is a promise, a promise on our part that we will not forget these brave fallen heroes as we stand here today and support one another. Thanks for allowing me to share these words. God bless, protect, and comfort all of you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chief Riley. This beautiful city and its citizens are protected by the members of Colorado Springs Professional Firefighters IAFF Local Number 5. Our brothers and sisters here are the caretakers 365 days a year of this memorial. Local 5 is one of the original 18 locals that founded the IAFF on February 28, 1918. I now invite IAF Local 5 President Jeremy Croto to provide greetings. Jeremy. Good afternoon. Sister and brother firefighters, General President Schaeberger, Secretary Treasurer Miller, IAFF Executive Board members, Mayor Bach, members of City Council, and other distinguished guests, welcome to the 2014 IAFF Fallen Firefighter Memorial. To the families, friends, and loved ones of the fallen being celebrated today, we are truly privileged to have you in attendance and we are honored to serve as your humble hosts for this solemn occasion. Please accept our most sincere gratitude for allowing the members of the Colorado Springs Professional Firefighters the opportunity to be a part of your lives for the week. During your time in Colorado Springs and from this point forward, we want you to know that we consider each of you a member of the Local 5 family. Our desire is to have you call on us as you would a close family member to assist with any need that arises during your visit to this beautiful community, so that your time in Colorado Springs is comfortable, inspiring, and free of hassle. Throughout the year, the members of IAFF Local 5 work collaboratively with the International to maintain and preserve this tribute to service and sacrifice, and the memories of the brave men and women enshrined on these walls of honor. This year's event is of specific importance as it will be the final ceremony at the site as it currently exists. The members of the International Association of Firefighters have elected to enhance this site in a manner that will expand it appropriately, honoring each and every member of the IAFF lost in the line of duty since its founding, while still maintaining the inclusive beauty of the original site. The Colorado Springs professional firefighters are honored to assist with the improvements to this hallowed ground. It has always been, and will forever remain, our intent to ensure that the women and men memorialized here are remembered for their dedication with respect and integrity. We do this with the tremendous support of our members, our fire department, the CSFD Explorer Program, business and community leaders, and most importantly, the strong outpouring from the citizens of Colorado Springs. This community proudly unites to ensure that your loved one's memory is preserved with the dignity they've earned as professional firefighters. As members of the IAFF and Colorado Springs family, you should know that you are forever welcome and encouraged to attend this annual ceremony or pay visit to the memorial anytime throughout the year. Thank you for being here today. Local 5 is honored to have you.
silent until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. And I have Thank you to the JKF Chorale for your uplifting music. We have now come to that moment where we present the names of our brothers and sisters who have made the ultimate sacrifice. In the past year, we have added 168 names to this wall. The names of our fallen will be read by Honor Guard members from IAFF affiliates across the United States and Canada. After each name is read, a bell will sound, and teams of flag bearers will render a flag salute with the colors lowered for each name as it is spoken. An IAFF Honor Guard member will then present the family the flag of the International Association of Firefighters. In order to assist us with the presentations, we ask only one representative from each family to stand when your loved one's name is called and that you remain standing until the flag presenter reaches your seat. At that point, all members of the family that wish may stand and jointly receive the IAFF memorial flag. Following the presentation of the last flag, the IAFF Honor Guard will toll the bell and play taps. I now invite our Honor Guard to begin reading the names of our fallen.
We will now present the 55 names of those line of duty deaths from previous years that were reported to us during this past year. These members died from occupational diseases that were recognized during the past 12 months by their fire department, their local, and their state or provincial government as occurring in the line of duty. Captain John Morrow, Local 357, Evansville, Indiana. Captain Elmer Debs, Local 357, Evansville, Indiana. Firefighter Theodore P. Landers, Local 357, Evansville, Indiana. Captain James D. Masterson, Sr., Local 357, Evansville, Indiana. Captain Larry Hazelwanter, Local 80, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Firefighter Harold Fall, Local 80, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Lieutenant Dennis E. Grisfeld, Local 181, Regina, Saskatchewan. Battalion Chief Frank A. Sabo, Local 181, Regina, Saskatchewan. <laughs> Platoon Captain Lawrence D. Pyle, Local 181, Regina, Saskatchewan. <laughs> Captain Alan L. Anderson, Local 255, Calgary, Alberta. Captain James R. Keats, Local 255, Calgary, Alberta. Lieutenant William Lyons, Local 1707, Natick, Massachusetts. Firefighter Gerald A. Stanhope, Local 1707, Natick, Massachusetts. Firefighter Robert J. Kent, Local 1707, Natick, Massachusetts. Lieutenant John Pacheco, Jr., Local 1314, Fall River, Massachusetts. Firefighter Dennis E. Matthew, Local 1314, Fall River, Massachusetts. Lieutenant Peter McCaffrey, Local 628, 
Yonkers, New York. Firefighter Anthony W. Colavito, Local 628, Yonkers, New York. Engineer Kenneth P. Mosev, Local 1014, Los Angeles County, California. Captain Denny Gibbs, Local 1014, Los Angeles County, California. Captain Jim Sheehan, Local 1014, Los Angeles County, California. Engineer Timothy J. Bernstein, Local 1014, Los Angeles County, California. Driver, engineer, Edward W. Keen, local 935, San Bernardino, California. Engineer, Ronald S. Reed, local 935, San Bernardino County, California. Deputy Chief, Anthony Butch E. Rustaghini, local 1652, Framingham, Massachusetts. District Chief Barry J. White, Local 3888, Toronto, Ontario. Firefighter Robert H. Crisp, Local 3888, Toronto, Ontario. Captain David L. Parks, Jr., Local 2881, Cal Fire, Sacramento, California. Captain Russell B. Gordon, Local 2881, Cal Fire, Sacramento, California. Captain Timothy M. Echeverry, Local 2881, Cal Fire, Sacramento, California. Pilot Gary E. Lott, Local 2881, Cal Fire, Sacramento, California. Captain Richard A. Halstead, Local 2881, Cal Fire, Sacramento, California. Firefighter EMT Mark C. Bobbin, Local 2068, Fairfax County, Virginia. Firefighter Kevin M. Delano Sr., Local 94, New York, New York. Firefighter Vincent J. Albanese, Local 94, New York, New York. Firefighter William Henry Quick, Local 94, New York, New York. Firefighter Walter Torres, Local 94, New York, New York. Battalion Chief, Richard D. Arizosa, Local 854, New York, New York. Supervising Fire Marshal, Emil Harnischfeger, 
Local 854, New York, New York. Firefighter, Mogilla M.C. Schaus, Local 282, Buffalo, New York. Firefighter, Joseph C. Frazier, Local 1032, Medford, Massachusetts. Lieutenant Randall L. Rideout, Local 1032, Medford, Massachusetts. Captain Alan W. Northrup, Local 209, Edmonton, Alberta. Captain Lionel Bud Colsey, Local 209, Edmonton, Alberta. Paramedic, Captain Kurt H. Eichley, Local 4454, Blackfoot, Idaho. Captain Stephen H. Grant, Local 1092, Ajax, Ontario. District Chief, Mario Paiva, Local 455, Windsor, Ontario. Captain Jose M. Martinez, Local 230, San Jose, California. Captain William Morley, Local 467, Guelph, Ontario. Captain Robert Lee Wise, Local 4405, Midland, Texas. Assistant Chief Harold B. Hollingsworth, Local 3133, Central Jack, Missouri. Captain Kenneth L. Merritt, Local 867, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Firefighter EMT Lawrence Sweetnick, Local 340, Garfield Heights, Ohio. Deputy Chief Michael A. Nicholson, Local 1347, Watertown, Massachusetts. Firefighter Dean K. Tajima, Local 1607, North Las Vegas, Nevada. We will now present the 113 IAFF members who died in the line of duty between May 31st, 2013 and June of this year.
Captain EMT Matthew R. Renaud, Local 341, Houston, Texas. Firefighter EMT Ann Sullivan, Local 341, Houston, Texas. Firefighter EMT Robert H. Garner, Local 341, Houston, Texas. Engineer Operator Robert Ryan Beebe, Local 341, Houston, Texas. Deputy Chief Charles Chuck Crowley, Jr., Local 937, Chelsea, Massachusetts. District Chief Clifton J. DeCourcy, Local 1009, Worcester, Massachusetts. Captain George F. Brown, Jr., Local 2702, Fairfax City, Virginia. Lieutenant Craig W. Feeney, Local 1363, Cranston, Rhode Island. Firefighter Paramedic Eric Rue Wenches, Local 1724, Watertown, South Dakota. Captain Janet L. Chatelaine, Local 1014, Los Angeles County, California. Captain Herbert Lytle, Local 162, Ottawa, Ontario. Driver Engineer John Knighton, Local 29, Spokane, Washington. Wildland Firefighter, Lead Sawyer, Andrew Sterling Ashcraft, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Squad Boss, Robert E. Caldwell, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Squad Boss, Travis Clay Carter, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter Dustin J. DeFord, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter Christopher A. McKenzie, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Crew Superintendent Eric Shane Marsh, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter, EMT, Grant Quinn McKee. Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter, Sean Michael Meisner. Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. 
Wildland Firefighter Scott D. Norris, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter Wade Scott Parker, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter John J. Person, Jr., Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter Anthony Michael Rose, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Captain Jesse James Steed, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter EMT Joe Thurston, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter Lead Crew Travis John Turbyfill, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter EMT William H. Warnicke, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Squad Boss Clayton Thomas Witted, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter EMT Kevin Joseph Wojcik, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Wildland Firefighter Garrett Zupiger, Local 3066, Prescott, Arizona. Captain Peter J. Casey, Local 854, New York, New York. Engineer Paramedic Christopher Topher Douglas, Local 2881, Cal Fire, Sacramento, California. Firefighter John Thomas Austin, Local 792, Quincy, Massachusetts. Captain Rafael Herrero, Local 1403, Metro Dade Fire Rescue, Florida. Firefighter Gordon Ratcliffe, Local 1253, Cranbrook, British Columbia. Battalion Chief Brian R. Wolf, Local 3473, Downey, California. Firefighter EMT David A. Breyer, Local 3653, Middleborough, Massachusetts. Firefighter EMT Bob W. Hamill, Local 1805, Clark County, Washington. Captain Carl Murray, Local 452, Vancouver, Washington. Firefighter. Nathan Lee Winter, Local 135, Wichita, Kansas. Driver, Engineer, Juan Pablo Casanova, Local 970, 
Brownsville, Texas. Captain Robert D. Moore, Local 255, Calgary, Alberta. Firefighter Edward S. Toth, Local 460, Brantford, Ontario. Firefighter EMT Norman Walters, Local 891, San Bernardino, California. Assistant Chief Joseph C. Dar, Local 2460, Chillicothe, Missouri. Captain William J. McCaw, Local 255, Calgary, Alberta. District Chief David T. Robinson, Local 1833, Huntsville, Alabama. Driver Engineer Keith Wisnowski, Local 4420, Pasco County, Florida. Firefighter EMT I.D. Rivers, Local 2294, Hillsborough County, Florida. Driver Operator Russell H. Scarda, Local 734, Baltimore, Maryland. Firefighter, paramedic, Brandon Mitchell Underhill. Local 4409, South Lake Tahoe, California. Firefighter, Michael C. Oseki. Local 3918, South Fire District, Middletown, Connecticut. Fire Inspector Richard W. Mason, Local 162, Ottawa, Ontario. Engineer John T. DeLuke, Local 1285, Las Vegas, Nevada. Firefighter EMT Kevin W. Jenkins, Local 3666, Frederick County, Maryland. 
Engineer, Sean Michael Bear, Local 1014, Los Angeles County, California. Captain Paul Chankovic, Local 1974, Livermore, Pleasanton, California. Firefighter Adolfo Oteno, Local 94, Brooklyn, New York. Firefighter Paramedic Daniel J. Bauer, Local 441, Freeport, Illinois. Driver, Operator William J. Harris, Local 42, Kansas City, Missouri. Paramedic Karen A. Milton, Local 4847, Hartford County, Maryland. Captain Michael L. Bates, Local 3888, Toronto, Ontario. Captain Daniel V. Armente, Local 798, San Francisco, California. Firefighter Lawrence O. Walker, Local 499, Cambridge, Ontario. Captain Paramedic Charlie Boomer, Local 2549, Riverview, New Brunswick, Canada. Platoon Chief Dennis J. Petrobon, Local 527, Sudbury, Ontario. Captain John D. Mazzocco, Local 1014, Los Angeles County, California. Captain Pete Santana, Local 2881, Cal Fire, Sacramento, California. Captain Brian B. Brusgard, Local 867, Winnipeg, Manitoba. District Chief James Allen Gardner, Local 4405, Midland, Texas. Deputy Chief Ronald E. Wenzel, Jr., Local 1803, Reading, Pennsylvania. Firefighter Jeff Campion, Local 628, Yonkers, New York. Driver, Engineer, Gregory J. Hennessy, Local 3631, Orange County, California. Firefighter, Michael B. Malone, Local 140, Nashville, Tennessee. Firefighter, Joseph Mullen, Local 718, Boston, Massachusetts. Firefighter Francis X. Flynn, Local 718, Boston, Massachusetts. Firefighter EMT Henry S. Plowman, Local 655, Bradford, 
Pennsylvania. Firefighter Stephen A. Mashinsky, Local 92, Toledo, Ohio. Firefighter EMT James A. Dickman, Local 92, Toledo, Ohio. Lieutenant John G. Murphy, Local 798, San Francisco, California. Firefighter Clyde Waterai, Local 798, San Francisco, California. Firefighter Paramedic Michael W. Wirtz, Local 4813, Woodstock, Illinois. Firefighter EMT Carl Edward Andriano, Local 2057, Orange County, Florida. Lieutenant Bruce Cowboy Britt, Local 1055, Columbia, Missouri. Captain Neil G. Harrison, Local 3888, Toronto, Ontario. Firefighter EMT Kevin J. Bristol, Local 2343, Peekskill, New York. Lieutenant David Eric Smith, Local 975, Austin, Texas. Senior Captain Jeffrey E. Bayless, Local 1264, Anchorage, Alaska. Captain Stephen J. McKenna, Local 2892, Salem, New Hampshire. Firefighter Arthur Ace Mascufo, Local 1032, Medford, Massachusetts. Fire Cause Investigator Thomas R. Quesnell, Local 479, Tucson, Arizona. Firefighter EMT Thomas A. Purit, Local 622, Fort Dodge, Iowa. Firefighter Paramedic Ricky K. Halcom, Local 136, Dayton, Ohio. 
Firefighter Michael Dork Crosby Kennedy, Local 718, Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> Lieutenant Edward J. Walsh, Jr., Local 718, Boston, Massachusetts. Paramedic Dora D. Waddy, Local 1311, Baltimore County, Maryland. Firefighter George C. Gobeil, Local 841, New Bedford, Massachusetts. Assistant Chief Rennie E. Leroy, Local 2881, Cal Fire, Sacramento, California. Firefighter Hank Schmidt, Local 492, Sarnia, Ontario. Captain Bud Planchin, Local 3007, Springdale, Arkansas. Lieutenant John G. Fox, Local 1604, Bellevue, Washington. Firefighter Thomas P. Bell, Local 718, Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> Lieutenant Paramedic Dan W. Schrader, Local 1660, Tualatin Valley, Oregon. <laughs> Firefighter Specialist Daryl G. Rice, Local 1014, Los Angeles County, California. Engineer, paramedic, Denise A. Waterman, Local 487, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Lieutenant, paramedic, Jeffrey B. Newland, Local 2546, Northport, Florida. Captain Laura Marie Larson, Local Union 385, Omaha, Nebraska. Captain David E. Cheney, Jr., Local 3228, Gladstone, Missouri. Deputy Chief David P. Fiore. Local 992, New Britain, Connecticut. Fado, Robert W. Fogel III. Local 1311, Baltimore County, Maryland. Battalion Chief John Mac McDonald. Local F121, Naval District. Washington. <laughs> Lieutenant Stephen B. Reisman, Local 854, New York, New York.
Would everyone please rise? I am Bruce Brown, your IAFF Fallen Firefighter Memorial Honor Guard Commander. The sounding of the bell is a tradition of the fire service. In the past, as firefighters began their tour of duty, it was the bell that signaled the beginning of the day's shift. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell, which summoned these brave men and women to fight fires and to place their lives on the line for the good of their fellow man. When the fire was out and the alarm had come to an end, it was the bell that signaled the completion of that call. When a firefighter had died in the line of duty, it was the toll of that bell that solemnly announced a comrade's passing. And so, to those who have selflessly given of their lives for the good of their fellow man, their task completed, their duties well done, we will again sound the last alarm. They have gone home. Praise it! Home! Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor to introduce this union's leader, General President of the International Association of Firefighters, Harold A. Schaefberger. Good afternoon to all of the families my sisters and brothers in this proud profession who we are here today in the shadow of Pikes Peak. On behalf of General Secretary Treasurer Tom Miller, the entire IAFF Executive Board, and the 300,000 members across two great countries that I am proud to represent, welcome to our Fallen Firefighter Memorial. I want to begin by expressing the profound thanks and gratitude of our union to IFF Local 5 here in Colorado Springs, who maintain this sacred ground. Their commitment to the preservation of this sanctuary year in and year out, all of the thousands of hours they spend, taking the hands of you, the families of our fallen, from the moment you step off the airplane or pull into the parking lot, check into the hotel, and transporting you to the events 
making sure all of you are treated with the dignity and the respect you deserve this special weekend. And while they are totally committed to serving you, they're still protecting this community and sacrificing valuable time with their own families. All of that work coming with extraordinary effort. So to you, Jeremy, my brother, your team, and all of your members here in Colorado Springs, Local 5, thank you so much for everything you've done. I also want to thank Father Mulcrone. Father Tom, thank you for leading us in prayer this afternoon, for once again serving as our MC for this wonderful service. But I also want to thank you so much for providing the spiritual guidance and support for our union in your role as the IFF's chaplain as well as the chaplain for this magnificent memorial. Thank you so much, Father Tom. And I want to take a moment to recognize the lone survivor of the crew of 19 Granite Mountain Hotshots, all IAFF members who were lost in the Yarnell Hills fire, and who we are very thankful to have here with us today. To you, Brendan McDonough, we welcome you so much, brother. God bless you. Today, under the brilliant blue Colorado sky, we are gathered here in this beautiful memorial park with its setting over a mile high into the heavens and surrounded by these magnificent Rocky Mountains to embrace you, the families of our fallen, and to honor the 168 of the bravest and the best from our proud union. Whether they were taken by occupational cancers by incidents of cardiac arrest and stroke, by the insidious diseases that ravage the bodies of too many of our members, whether they were taken by the toxic exposures following the tax at the sites of the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, or whether they were taken alone from a traumatic event on the fire ground, or with their sister and brothers in one of the catastrophic multiple line of duty incidents last year in Houston, Toledo, Boston, and in the hills surrounding Prescott, Arizona. Those who so dedicated their lives to protecting human life that they were willing to give their last full measure to preserve the lives of their fellow citizens, they deserve to be honored and they deserve to be celebrated. And while words here today cannot possibly capture the true spirit of their service and sacrifice, it is their devotion to humanity that now provides all of us with the guidance we need to soldier on and continue their work. The profession that those whose names we place on these beautiful walls today is full of customs that are meant to symbolize the strength and sheer will that are required to serve in such a tough profession as they chose. And sadly, but appropriately, we also have many proud traditions to honor their devotion and loss when the rigors of this job overcome those who were drawn to the calling of the fire service. You see many of those symbols on display here today. The honor guard and pipes and drums who display their respect so beautifully. The flags of our countries and our union raised and lowered while waving in the gentle breezes the procession of rigs, and the rolling thunder of our bikers that preceded our service this afternoon, and the bells that tolled to send your loved one home. These traditions, customs, and symbols of respect are truly meant to show you, the families of our fallen, how much your son, your daughter, your sister, and brother 
your mother and father, not only meant to us, but how much their service meant to their community and to their country. They also used these symbols in many branches of our uniformed service. For sacrificing for the good of your country and your fellow man many times requires the ultimate sacrifice. And a number of these traditions, in fact, date, date back to the ancient Greeks who honored those who gave their lives in defense of their beloved state with beautiful services, full of song and pageantry, and with orations that extol the virtues of the brave. And clearly those traditions have stood the test of time. The most notable service and oration of this kind in the history of the United States and is well known throughout the world is that which was delivered as part of the consecration of the National Cemetery at Gettysburg, Maryland, Pennsylvania. The program that day used music and prayer to ease the pain of the incredible losses that had been suffered by the nation and by the families of the fallen. It was set in full view of the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. And the speech delivered as the last part of that program that remains an inspiration to us all, of course, was written and delivered by President Abraham Lincoln. By all accounts, President Lincoln was a wonderful writer who drew inspiration from many places, including from the ancient Greeks. And while the Gettysburg Address will forever remain in the annals of history, what is less well known is the eulogy that Lincoln delivered at the official services for the late President Zachary Taylor in Chicago in July of 1850. It is a beautiful acknowledgment that all of us, indeed all that is living, are engaged in a pursuit that ends with us literally in the heavens, that doth comes to us all. And to some, like those we celebrate here today, comes much too early. It's also a tribute that once again stands the test of time, and which now, I paraphrase, as we honor those incredible individuals we have etched on these beautiful granite walls here today. Those who put themselves in harm's way every time they responded to a call for help, the odds were greatly against them. On each call, defeat seemed inevitable. And yet in all, when the din had ceased and the smoke had blown away, they were still standing. Throughout their lives, they triumphed time and again. Those we honor and those all around us in their crisp dress blues seem to have a dogged incapacity to understand that defeat is possible each time they roll out the doors. But quietly, as the earth is in its orbit, the conquerors at time are conquered. The fruits of their labor, their names, their memory and example are all that are left to us. Their example verifying the great truth that he who humbleth himself shall be exalted. Teaching us that to serve one's citizens and community with a singleness of purpose gives assurances of that country's gratitude and secures its best honors. Each of the stories of our fallen is placed on these walls. And each time another name is added, the stories grow. They're stories of courage, of honor, of duty, of family, of sacrifice. And each of your loved one's stories will remain here and be told for all time. Generations far into the future will come to honor them and to know, but for the grace of God, their name could be placed on these walls. For this union, it is our wall of honor. It is our place of remembrance. And because time, like fire, has taken its toll in the foundation of our memorial, we will be rebuilding, reinforcing, and renewing this sacred ground over the next year. But for you, the families, 
We want you to truly know that this is and will remain your sacred ground. We hope that you will return here and recount the laughter you shared with your loved one, to remember the tough days you had in a journey throughout a lifetime that brought you even closer together, to reminisce about the love you shared far into the future. And we want you to always remember that this IAFF is here for you today, tomorrow, and in the years to come. For those we are here to celebrate today, Thank you for the gift of your lives. You have answered your final call. You have served us well. You will always be remembered, and we will never forget. God bless you. God bless all of the families, this IAFF, and all of our members on the front lines everywhere. Thank you.
Whenever a member of this union falls in the line of duty, the colors of our two great nations, of this beautiful state, and of our very own IAFF are lowered from full staff to half staff from the time of notification through sunset of the day of that member's funeral. The Honor Guard will now raise our memorial flags and then solemnly lower them to half staff in memory of your loved ones. At this time, please rise as the IAFF Memorial Honor Guard retires the colors and lowers the memorial flags. Prepare to retrieve the colors. Ready, retrieve. Present, present, oh. First color, order, arm. Center, hey. Mark time, mark. Forward, march. Oh, oh, to the colors. Ready, place.
Attendees, please be seated. As we bring this memorial to a close, the IAFF Honor Guard Commander Bruce Brown of Orange County, California, Local 3631, Deputy Commander John Sobey of Ottawa, Ontario, Local 162, and Deputy Commander Brent Jones of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Local 215 will render a final salute to the families of our fallen and retrieve our honor guard. Please remain in your seats during the honor guard dismissal.
Thank you to the JKF Chorale for performing today to honor our fallen brothers and sisters and their families. Thank you very much. <laughs> to you, the families of our fallen brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us in remembering your loved ones. We hope this has been a moving and a memorable tribute for all of you. We want you to know that this memorial is your memorial. As Schaeberger made clear, you are part of our family and are welcome to return at any time. We hope you will visit us again. God bless each and every one of you as you travel home. And now we invite you to join General President Schaeberger in the field behind this memorial as the IAFF Memorial Honor Guard and forms its final formation to the music of the IAFF Pipes and Drums, led by Pipe Major Hunter Chapeau of Houston, Texas, Local 341. God bless you all.